So we got, we strengthened the Coogan Law and we got it so that 15% of everything any kid earns in the entertainment industry is set aside into a blocked account that they can receive when they're 18. And it's only 15% because you've got to pay the agent, you've got to pay the managers, you've got to pay the taxes, you've got to pay, you know, the parent if the if there's right. money due. But this is about... Something being there something being there. Protect protected. Exactly. So we did that. We also passed uh, Assembly Bill 776, um, which was to protect the educational rights of young performers. Because what was what happened to me, specifically, I was doing a cartoon series, Peter Pan and the Pirates, Voiceover. Yeah, I was one of the Chris lost boys. an awful lot of voiceover. Joe. I was on the sh I was on Peter Pan and the Pirates, and I was in the seventh grade, and I was working with Tim Curry, and I was also the voice of Casper the Ghost at the time. Yes. And I guess there's nothing scarier than ghosts, except for monsters. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I was really little, and the littlest kid in the seventh grade, and about as white as Casper, and this did not go over very well at school. Plus, I was absent like 52 days out of the semester, you know, because I was working. But right. while you're working, you have school on the set. Well, I would come back, and i get the crap beaten out of me by some of the other kids who were jealous. And they wouldn't have known what I was doing, except for the teachers would say, well, how much money did you earn yesterday, Christopher? Really? None of your business. I didn't know how much money I was making. I was just doing this because that's what I did, you know. And um, I'm Casper. I'm going in to do my. That's right. Voices. I'm doing that. I'm doing Peter Pan. This is what I do. Like I enjoy it. Like I'm getting my set tutoring. I'm doing all my homework and still maintaining good grades. Well, what we found out the the school call, then was calling my mom and saying, "Well, Christopher's truant," and they were going to send the truant officer over to the house and even though I was coming back to school and I was getting all the good grades you know I was doing the work, work turning it in it, and the right? teachers were, were marking it all complete what we found out is that in LAUSD that the school only got the average daily attendance money if the child is in the seat at the school so the school itself wasn't getting paid for me being enrolled there by the state so the school had a beef with me. Gotcha. So as a result, they're like, oh, well, he's going to have to re repeat the seventh a grade. a lot of young performers just get pulled out and get homeschooled exactly. anyway. But Which has its own your, set of right, issues. Right, but you and your family wanted to continue that experience. So. Exactly. So, so at this point... Um, I, I did get pulled out, and I got sent to a small private school, which was compatible with what we were doing, and it was a wonderful school, and I got a great education. Um, oh, but wait, let me go okay. back to AB seven seven six because that that was the resolution to to the school to issue. the to the school issue. We went to the state, the merry band of formers once right, again, right. and we got it changed so that the schools get paid for even when the kid is on the set. Awesome, you know. Because they're doing their work, they're enrolled in that school, and then they can they can go on what's called independent study. Okay. But it's accredited through the state, and they they can be enrolled in. But they're in a still public counted as long as they're counted. completed the work. And the school gets their money, the so everybody's happy. happy. So if the, if there's a school that isn't complying with that, it's because they're not aware of the law. And us former act, kid actors, if there's a problem, we will actually show up this at the school with the legislation. The and, merry band. Yeah, we will. And, <laughs> they do a little song and dance, yeah, and they explain the rule. It's like, eight, <laughs> seven, seven, six. Yeah. <laughs> so, so as you got older, uh, then you went to film school. I did. I put myself through Loyola Marymount Film School. And what I loved about Loyola more than, than doing film there was this, I got this amazing broad-based liberal arts social justice education. Okay. It was about service to others. And and you do that by serving yourself you kindly, you know, being kind to yourself and, and embracing your gifts and your talents and then taking those talents and going and serving other people. And what comes back to you is just it's it's more than tenfold when you do that. And and because of that, I've been able to live the dream. Right. You know, to to maintain my own 
production studio and do the projects that I want to do at a level that I want to do them at. And I serve clients and I serve my own projects as well. And it's, it's exhilarating. It's taken me all around the world from South Africa to Europe. I mean, because your life is all-encompassing. Like I, like I said in the very beginning, you're, you're a performer, mm -hmm. and you are still embracing all of those aspects of performing, but now you're also directing and producing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine a life without music being a huge part of it. Right. I couldn't imagine my life without filmmaking as a means of communication. All of this is about communicating, and ultimately that's what my degree was in communication and fine arts with an emphasis in television production and a minor in music. 